The 1988 winner of the Heisman Award is Barry Sanders of Oklahoma State University. I thank God for putting me in this position. Uh, you know, I couldn't have done it without him. And secondly, I'd like to thank my offensive line and my fullback, Gary Lindbergh. You know, they've done such a great job. Uh, you know, they, I couldn't have asked for a better season out of those guys. And, uh, you know, I'd like to thank William and Shirley Sanders for being so inspirational in my life and uh, bringing me up the way they know I should be brought up. Thanks a lot. In 1988, Oklahoma State's Barry Sanders put together a season which can only be described as incredible. His breathtaking performance is one sure to etch an indelible memory. One moment in time. For every game. The 1988 edition of the Oklahoma State Cowboys was a truly remarkable one, featuring an offense that simply ran roughshod over its opposition. It was a team laden with star performers, but in 1988, none shone more brightly than the consensus All-America junior tailback from Wichita. By overwhelming mandate, the most decorated collegiate player in the country. They call Barry Sanders the Kansas Comet. As anyone who has had the unfortunate task of trying to catch this 5'8", 197-pound dynamo can tell you, his is an appropriate nickname. A dream season, a once-in-a-lifetime achievement. There's simply no other description for Barry Sanders' 1988 campaign, one in which he shattered records many thought untouchable. Sanders' storybook season saw him establish 24 new NCAA standards. Among the most noteworthy, 2,628 yards rushing, surpassing the single season record held by Marcus Allen of USC. 234 points and 39 touchdowns, obliterating the mark shared by Penn State's Lydell Mitchell and Mike Rozier of Nebraska. 3,249 all-purpose yards, easily erasing one of the oldest NCAA records, that formerly held by Supreme Court Justice Byron Whizzer White, an All-American at Colorado in the late 1930s. And those were just the headliners of a remarkable bevy of records gathered by Barry Sanders in 1988. The option play, pitches back to Sanders, sweeping right, 20, 50, to the 10, to the 5, touchdown, the touchdown. Cowboys! There's the NCAA record touchdown. He is down the Receipt of the Heisman Trophy speaks eloquently for Barry Sanders' accomplishments in 1988. But the award recognizes the achievements of just one season. Barry Sanders' performance in 1988 was one for all time. The saga of Barry Sanders is merely the latest in a chain of success stories that have become commonplace at Oklahoma State University in the 1980s. 
Indeed, while occasional success characterized the first 76 years of Cowboy football, sustained success has become the watchword of this decade. And the five-year tenure of head coach Pat Jones has seen an unprecedented era of excellence. We have taken this program really into the upper echelon of the ranks collegiately. And I think that, that again, guys that come in here, young people that come into this program, have got a good work ethic, have got good personal habits, have got good character. I think that allows them to be not only good football players, but also good students and good citizens and just down to earth good people. Pat Jones has guided OSU to 44 wins and four bowl appearances in five seasons at the helm, becoming the winningest coach in cowboy history over that span. In fact, the Pat Jones era might well be called the golden age of cowboy football. Jones's consistent approach has made him seventh among active coaches in winning percentage and has put the Cowboys in the top 20 on a regular basis. The result is enthusiastic support from all corners, from the university's top executives to those who carry on the tradition. Well, I'm a believer in uh, competition, uh, whether it's in economics, whether it's in athletics, whether it's in academics. I think competition is important, and we want to recruit the kind and the caliber of student, faculty member, staff that will be competitive. Pat Jones is uh, one of the most successful football coaches in this country. He has developed a program that's, that's built on quality of students. He is uh, a person who really believes in the young athletes. He believes in developing them in academics as well as in athletics. And a, a person who takes a lot of interest in his players. The last few years for me here at Oklahoma State have really been uh, a great opportunity. I've had a chance to play uh, in a program that's consistently ranked in the top 20 in the country and a chance to go to school at one of the finest academic institutions not only in the Big A but in the country. I wouldn't change anything. It's been a great experience. I've met a lot of people. I'm going to have a degree that'll help me 20 years down the line and I've also had a great athletic experience. To illustrate the current lofty status of the Oklahoma State football program under Pat Jones, consider the following. The Cowboys completed the 1988 season with a 10-2 record, the third 10-victory season in the five-year tenure of Pat Jones. The Cowboys have also posted a 23-4 record in their last 27 games, an accomplishment exceeded by few other teams in the country. The principal weapon in the tremendous success enjoyed by the 88 Cowboys was a devastating offensive attack. Enthusiastic crowds flocked to Lewis Field to support the nation's finest offensive team. The Cowboys led the country in scoring, averaging nearly 49 points a game and in the process rewrote the OSU record book almost every week. The Cowboys set school records for points, touchdowns, and total yardage in a season, and established another new standard with a whopping 717 yards of total offense in one game. Turnover was also a vital part of the OSU success story. The Cowboys finished third nationally in turnover margin. they must have been the country's most efficient team in converting those turnovers into points. More than 80% of those opportunities resulted in scores.
part of the credit for OSU's phenomenal production on offense must go to some unsung heroes. All Big 8 place kicking specialist Kerry Blanchard finished in the top 10 nationally in scoring and set an NCAA regular season record with 67 consecutive extra point conversions. It is the role of offensive linemen to labor in obscurity, but the consistent veteran members of this unit gained a measure of notoriety in becoming known as the War Pigs. Mike Wolf. John Bovair, Jason Kidder, and all Big 8 performers Byron Woodard and Chris Stanley teamed up with fullback Garrett Limbrick to bulldoze away the opposition, creating opportunities for the country's best collegiate football player. As Barry Sanders wreaked havoc among opposing defenses, he became the anchor of the finest trio of skill position players in the nation. Census All-America Hartley Dykes concluded his cowboy career as the most productive receiver in Big 8 history. Garnering All-America honors for the second consecutive year, his career totals read 224 receptions, good for 3,500 yards and 31 touchdowns. He caught at least two passes in 35 straight games, completely rewriting all Oklahoma State receiving records. Obviously, Hartley Dykes must share some of his success with the man aiming the football in his direction. All Big 8 quarterback Mike Gundy has established himself as the finest passer and signal caller in Oklahoma State history. The Midwest City senior-to-be has the credentials to back up such a claim. The nation's second leading passer in 1988, Gundy threw for 2,163 yards and 19 touchdowns completing 65% of his attempts. He holds almost every OSU passing mark and has eclipsed former great Bob Fenimore's school record for total offense in a career. Destined to be the most prolific passer in Big 8 history, Gundy's most impressive quality is his record as a winner. OSU's spectacular success in the last two and a half years parallels Gundy's tenure as the starting quarterback.